Lisa Tucker Gray. My pronouns are she and her, and we are Trinity Episcopal Church, a progressive, inclusive, creative community of faith whose building is located in downtown Toledo, Ohio. And now with this sacred digital presence, our membership and participation are worldwide. Wherever you find yourself on your spiritual journey today, know that you are welcome and wanted here. So now open your heart and prepare to receive the love that God has for you today. Welcome home. Where are you now when darkness seems to win? Where are you now when the world is Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are those who live themselves fully with no doubt or hesitation, who know their sacred purpose like a hunger. Oak tree in her majesty, owl in her night knowing, stream in her quiet singing, marigolds with faces of joy. May the fireflies light your way in the darkness. May the morning glory spark gratitude for a new day. May the witness of feather and hoof, leaf and light, reveal to you what it means to be truly, holy, fully yourself breaking open the sacred seed planted within. Cherish the badger who ambles across earth, the raven painting the sky, the horse galloping over meadow. See how they spark your own longing to run or fly into the arms of yourself, to know your name, the one that has always been etched in your heart from the very first moment.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus said to the crowd, To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. Be still and know that God is here. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer. Amen. One day, you finally knew what you had to do and began. Though the voices around you kept shouting their bad advice, though the whole house began to tremble and you felt the old tug at your ankles, mend my life, each voice cried, but you did not stop. You knew what you had to do, though the wind pried with its stiff fingers at the very foundations, though their melancholy was terrible, it was already late enough and a wild night and the road full of fallen branches and stones. But little by little, as you left their voices behind, the stars began to burn through the sheets of clouds and there was a new voice, which you slowly recognized as your own, that kept you company as you strode deeper and deeper into the world determined to do the only thing you could do, determined to save the only life you could save. Hello, my beloved friends. Some of you will no doubt recognize this poem by Mary Oliver called The Journey. I have used it a number of times over the years and it feels like a companion by now, like a favorite song. Always it seems to show up with something I need to hear, either for the first time or more often, helping uncover a truth that has been there all along, waiting to be remembered and seen and heard. Today I use it as a starting point, but honestly, I am struggling with our continued exploration of what it means to be a modern day disciple. For the last few weeks, we have been working our way through the Gospel of Matthew, hearing pieces of the instructions that Jesus laid out for his first band of followers. And then last week, we took time to read the entirety of the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew as a way to ground us in disciples, as the totality and import of this piece of scripture speaks directly to us as well. We heard it all in one sitting, the 10th chapter of Matthew sometimes might be described as Jesus's mandate for his followers then and now. As we listened together, we heard a clarion, compelling and beautiful vision for what it means to be a follower of Christ. We heard Jesus describe 
who those followers were meant to be and maybe us as well, what they were supposed to do and maybe us as well, and how they were to do it and maybe us as well. So today we move on from these holy marching orders, perhaps buoyed and maybe even a bit inspired to pick up our holy mantle and continue on the path of our discipleship journey as we follow the stories of Jesus in subsequent chapters. But wait, <laughs> there's a problem here. You see, between last Sunday and today, our world, once again, has been turned upside down. This time by yet another overwhelming proliferation of gun violence. And honestly, by Wednesday of this past week, I felt almost immobilized by the speed and devastation that came pouring out of various news outlets. An article in The Guardian online this week read this, 4th of July overshadowed by 16 mass shootings across the United States. 16 mass shootings in 13 states, leaving 15 people dead and 94 injured. Some of these included the following. Last Sunday on July 2nd in Baltimore, Maryland, two killed and 28 injured. On Monday, July 3rd in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, five killed and two children injured. Tuesday, July 4th in Shreveport, Louisiana, four killed and seven injured. Also Tuesday, July 4th in Tampa, Florida, a seven-year-old shot and killed. Wednesday, July 5th in Washington, D.C., nine injured in a drive-by shooting. And while this is not a comprehensive list, it is enough. It is enough to simply unravel us, to bring us to our collective knees, stopping us in our tracks and breaking our hearts wide open. So what do we do today? How do we react and then respond? Is it even possible to continue with our teachings and musings about being modern day disciples in light of all of this overwhelming tragedy? Honestly, I'm not sure, but I sense we must. We must find a way when it appears there is no way. In fact, it is what Jesus called the disciples to do and I believe is still calling us to do now. Revolutionary love is still the charge and the commission and the path that is laid before us as modern day disciples. There is nothing simple or easy or quick about this work. Today is another day to be both and people, to celebrate the gift of being made in the image of God and the unmistakable charge of our baptismal promise being kept about being loving our neighbor as ourselves and respecting the dignity of every human being. Hate has no place in this vision. Gun violence must be addressed and eradicated. Systemic structures that allow for the proliferation of guns must be challenged. Exactly a month ago, Trinity's deacon Miraba Mansfield preached on Trinity Sunday, the day we also recognized with other churches around the country as a National Anti-Gun Violence Awareness Sunday. We wore orange and she called us to action. There is now ongoing work in this community and you will be invited into various efforts in the weeks and months ahead. As hard as this is, I am eternally grateful that she is leading us, pushing us, pulling us further down this path, unable to turn away, and compelling us to claim this as gospel work that we are called to do together. Thank you, Deacon Miraba. But for today, I want to spend just a little time reflecting on this charge, this commission, this call in light of the gospel text that we have just heard from the 11th chapter of the gospel according to Matthew, as well as Mary Oliver's beautiful poem. Because for me, I need to stay grounded today when my heart is breaking. 
I need words and a tradition to remind me that I am not alone in my grief and my anger and that we are called to a journey that requires us to leave some voices behind as we make our way forward with Jesus as our guide. And that's where this gospel pa passage meets us today, right in the middle of our national conversation about gun violence, in which we seem to agree on oh so little right now. Here comes Jesus with a kind of unequivocal commentary. We find Jesus talking to the crowds, first praising the ministry of John the Baptist, and then he comes up with what might sound like a strange question. He says, to what will I compare this generation? What is he asking, or in this case, what is he perhaps saying? Well, picture a group of children playing a game outside. Someone then complains that they should be playing inside. So inside they go and then others complain that they need to be playing outside and on and on it goes. Nothing is right, someone is always wrong. In an unending circular argument where there is endless finger pointing and precious little progress made. Sound familiar? It seems that Jesus is addressing the age old problem of human discord and disagreement finger pointing, scapegoating, and blaming others is nothing new and sadly continues to be a part of our civil discourse today as much as ever. Today I hear the reminder that self-help often leaves us coming up short when we think about our call as followers of the way. Hear me out. Taking care of ourselves is important, of course, but today I want to suggest that Jesus isn't saying take care of yourself if you don't, who will? No, instead, it may be clearer to hear Jesus saying something like this to us. Step out of the center of your world. Follow me, put me first, and I promise you, you will not be alone. Or put another way, as Mary Oliver describes in her poem, little by little, we must leave the other voices behind because there is a new voice. And I would suggest today that Jesus describes that voice as his waiting to be heard. So what is that voice in our lives and who and how are we called to listen and how are we supposed to move forward when there is grief? Well, we can do so with courage and we can do so together. What does it mean to embrace Jesus's invitation, not only to follow him, but to embrace him as a guide, a friend, a co-conspirator, an agitator at times? It means to accept that there is hope, even when it feels hopeless. Three years ago at Trinity, many of us read Joan Chittister's wonderful book titled, The Time Is Now, A Call to Uncommon Courage. We explored her compelling plea to embrace a prophetic spirituality in our own lives. I revisited that book this week, and I believe her words still have a compelling urgency for us today. She implored us to find the courage necessary to have meaningful conversations about how we are to live our lives as followers of Christ if we accept that we have a moral and spiritual responsibility to reject or at the very least challenge all that is not of God sourced from love in the world. And what better way to describe, describe our current epidemic of gun violence? She suggests that if we embrace the lens of prophetic spirituality, we are then obligated to face into the hard questions before us whenever and wherever tragedy and injustice appear. We must learn together to ask questions, thinking about what we will say, what we will challenge, what we will do together. The dedication of her book is written to all of us those she describes as average people yearning for justice and equality. I offer her words today because, well, frankly, I need to hear them. In these words, I find hope at a time when hope is hard to see clearly. 
If we are courageous enough to stay tuned in and paying attention to the rampant suffering spreading across the nation right now, it is a challenging time. Hear her words when she writes, it is the unwavering faith, the open hearts and the piercing courage of people from every society that carries us through every major social breakdown to the emergence again of the humanization of humanity. So I want to end this morning with words that are not, on my, not my own. They are an adaptation of a prayer written 1,200 years ago by Alcuin of York, an Englishman who was a churchman and a scholar, a theologian, a liturgist, and an educator. May these words both comfort our souls and ignite our hearts with righteous indignation enough to find strength and courage for the path we are called to follow. May they charge and challenge us as apostles compelled to live Christ-centered lives. And may they never be enough, but always pointing towards the ineffable and life-changing reality of God's presence, power, mercy, and grace. God, go with us. Help us to be an honor to the church. Give us grace to follow Christ's word, to be clear in our task and careful in our speech. Give us open hands and joyful hearts. Let Christ be on our lips. May our lives reflect a love of truth and compassion. Let no one come to us and go away sad. May we offer hope to the poor and solace to the disheartened. Let us so walk before God's people that those who follow us might come into God's kingdom. Let us sow living seeds, words that are quick with life, that faith may be the harvest in people's hearts. In word and in example, let our lights shine in the darkness like the morning star. Do not allow the wealth of the world or its enchantment flatter us into silence as to your truth. Do not permit the powerful or judges or even our dearest friends to keep us from professing what is right. May it be so, dear ones. May it be so. Affirmation of Faith, the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the world made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called in to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life and death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. The prayers of the people. Blessed are you, eternal God, eternal love, May our hearts and minds be open today and always to your love. Inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world. Guide us and all peoples in the way of justice and peace. Gracious Creator, hear us as we pray for the unity of the church. May we all learn to see with eyes of trust, dignity, and respect. Inspire every member of the church to serve with a humble heart so that the life of Christ is revealed in us. Strengthen and comfort the lonely, tired, sad, depressed, or hurting. In your presence, may they find strength. 
make us alive, aware, and responsive to the needs of our community. Stir in us a desire to roll up our sleeves to make a difference in your name. Look with kindness on our homes, friends, and families. Grant that your love may grow in our hearts. Give rest and life eternal to all those who have died. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Amen. Let us confess our sins. To you, Lord, all hearts are open, no secrets are hidden. Forgive our secret sins, forgive our habitual sins, forgive our unnoticed sins, our sins against ourselves, our sins against others, our sins against you. Lord, let our memory provide no shelter for bitterness against another. Lord, let our minds provide no foothold for prejudice against another. Lord, let our hearts provide no harbor for hatred of another. Lord, let our attitudes be no associate in the condemnation of another. Lord, let our tongues be no accomplice in the judgment of another. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet those you're worshiping with today with a sign of God's love and peace. And if you're worshiping by yourself, peace to you this day. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My beloved friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the rain fall off your shoulders when you're caught in a storm. When the frost comes a-calling, may it find you safe and warm. May your place be set, may your promises be kept, and may you never forget that you are loved. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, descend upon you and saturate your beautiful hearts this day and forevermore. Amen.
go in peace to serve our loving, liberating, life-giving God. Mm -hmm.